Hello everyone, today the topic is spinal cord injuries. Spinal cord injuries are low incidence, high cost disability injuries. The age of uh, onset of spinal cord injuries, yeah, we can say uh, the age in which spinal cord injuries are more common is 16 to 30 years of age. Uh, the male to female ratio is 4 ratio 1. As the spine is divided into the four parts, cervical spine, thoracic spine, lumbar spine and the sacral spine. 55% of the spinal cord injuries are of cervical spine. Rest are equally divided between thoracic, lumbar and the sacral. Most common injury level is C5 followed by C4, C6, T12. Remember the order, most common is C5, then C4, then C6 and T12. Now if I talk about the etiology or etiology of spinal cord injuries then it can be traumatic and non-traumatic. The causes of traumatic spinal cord injuries can be motor, vehicle accident, fall, gunshot injuries and the earthquake. And the causes of non-traumatic spinal cord injuries can be pathological conditions, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, degenerative diseases, spinal neoplasm, infection, musculoskeletal reasons, uh, vertebral subluxation, and arteriovenous malformation. Uh, now moving towards the types of pain in the spinal cord injuries, it can be brown secured syndrome, anterior cord syndrome, central cord syndrome, and posterior cord syndrome. Uh, the details about each lien is given in the above diagram. Uh, one can uh, see and read from there. One can see the pattern of saddle anesthesia in the given diagram. Here is a description of the brown secret syndrome in the above diagram. Uh, now clinical manifestation of a patient with spinal cord injury. There will be spinal shock which means periods of dysreflexia, flaccidity and loss of sensation. The time period for spinal shock will be of 24 hours. Patient uh, paralytic eyelids would be there. It's mean patient will complain that he can't digest food. It is dangerous because it can lead to aspiration pneumonia. The venous thrombosis. Uh, patient will tell that uh, the leaking in the calf growing and the thigh region, either of these three regions, and low grade fever. The temperature control of the patient will be impaired. Usually there will be uh, low grade fever, high grade fever, and the fluctuation between low and high grade fever. Uh, if the lien will be of C1 to C3 level, then there would be respiratory impairment. This is also a medical emergency, so we put the patient on ventilator. Uh, spasticity and the pressure sore will also be in clinical manifestation. Uh, autonomic dysreflexia, which is again a medical emergency condition. And uh, patient uh, will uh, uh, tell about uh, change in the blood pressure in sitting and standing, which means postural hypotension changes and contractures would be also there. Now after discussing the assessment scales and the clinical manifestation, uh, we will talk about intervention we will use for the treatment of patients with spinal cord injury. In pharmacological intervention, we will use drugs like paclofen, dentolin, phenol, botulinum toxin, and other skeletal muscle relaxants. When the patient comes with spinal cord injury in acute condition, the average length of hospital stay is usually 15 days. And in case of rehabilitation uh, by physiotherapist, the average hospital stay is 44 days. Physiotherapists really use Asia motor testing scale for the assessment of the spinal cord injury and uh, modified Ashworth scale to know the level of spasticity in the spinal cord. And the scales are also given in above type. In physical therapy intervention, we can give patient heat therapy. Heat therapy to remove contracture and break contractures. Cold therapy to decrease sign of inflammation and pain. Tense that is transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation modality used in physical therapy outdoor patient department to stimulate the nerves. Electrical stimulation for the denervated muscles. Hydrotherapy, uh, hydrotherapy uh, uh, to equalize balance and the posture and the weight bearing exercises uh, to remove the contractures. Uh, 
secondary complications can be pressure ulcers so physical therapist will learn the uh, will ask the patient to learn healthy activities and to change his position on the bed after every half an hour and on the chair after every 20 minutes to avoid pressure ulcer we will ask the patient to change his position repeatedly or periodically to avoid pressure ulcer and pressure sores for in a patient of the spinal cord injury, there uh, is usually decreased total lung capacity, decreased, uh, decreased tidal volume of the lungs. So we will teach the patient to use accessory breathing techniques, uh, for example, apical breathing and the glossopharyngeal breathing. And we will uh, uh, teach the patient cuff techniques, secretion clearance will be done by physical therapist uh, and uh, uh, abdominal sporty belts, uh, belts will be used. Mm, uh, and electrical stimulation is also an important factor here. Uh, now I would like to discuss hydrotherapy in detail. Uh, in hydrotherapy as the name indicates, it's a uh, use of water therapy uh, for the postural correction of the patient. Hydrotherapy is usually used in, in, in more advanced setup of the physical therapies centers during outpatient departments. In hydrotherapy, we tie the patient with lumbar sporting belts on both sides and suspend the patient into the water pool with the assistance of physical therapists. As we know, uh, water will act up bouncy force on a suspended object in water. Uh, so water will uh, apply a, bion a bion force and uh, at the same time gravity is also acting on the patient. So there are two forces simultaneously, buoyancy force uh, from the water and the gravity force uh, uh, from the ground. Gear training is also a very important factor and a physical therapist will teach the patient uh, uh, safe kinematic gear techniques so that there would be decrease and uh, lessen uh, uh, chances of fall as we know uh, increased risk of falls are there in case of patient of uh, spinal cord injuries and even strokes so uh, we will uh, teach the patient safe kinematics and uh, safe biomechanics of the gait cycle in post discharge rehabilitation uh, physical therapist will assist the patient to learn the activities of the daily living active passive and active assisted range of motion exercises, self-care and the self-grooming skills. Physical therapist will help the patient to learn new patterns of independency like eating, mobility, mobility on the bed, um, bed to chair mobility and uh, use of assisted devices in a correct manner. Now in the last I would like to talk about stem cell therapy. Uh, beside all surgical interventions, pharmacological, conservative, physiotherapy intervention, the most uh, uh, advanced way is stem cell therapy for the repair of spinal cord injuries. Uh, stem cell therapy really uh, gives promising results with total repair and total independency of an individual suffering from spinal cord injury. Uh, actually, in the stem cell therapy, we transplant stem cell uh, in any organism and they can con and they can convert into any cells in any organism according to our desired effects uh, but uh, due to some ethical issue the stem cell therapy is still a controversy in medical mm, this was all about spinal cord injuries thank you all and uh, i hope that uh, this video may help you uh, for quick review of spinal cord injuries